Thank you, Lord. Where in the world are we this week? Northern New Mexico. It's elk season. We have some of the finest private land elk hunting opportunities that exist anywhere here in Northern New Mexico. That's what we're gonna show you this week in camp with Colorado Buck. I hope you enjoy it. Get off. Oh my God! Holy God! Say again. My name's Colorado. I've been hunting my whole life, guiding, outfitting, and hunting. Where in the world? 30 years now, I've made my living outdoors. Somewhere in the outback. We're in Mongolia. Hello, Argentina. Right on the El Vicho. Red Square, Moscow, Russia. Howdy, Colorado. Welcome to New Zealand. Where in the world? I just love it so much. I'm going to keep on loving it if it don't kill me. If I had it my way, I'd take the whole world home. Being in elk camp is one of my favorite places. I kind of grew up in hunting camp and I still enjoy it, I still love it today. Meeting the people, interacting, making new friendships and, and watching the excitement of the hunt, all the stories when the people come in and the stories that the hunters themselves tell, it never gets old. It's always exciting, it's always fun and I look forward to it each and every year. First day we headed down Poneal Creek, which is the far side of the ranch. Very seldom do you get a couple that comes out together hunting, and they were super lot of fun. The climb was something. That was my first experience with, okay, this is a backcountry hunt. I'm not nearly as in shape as I thought I was, but Joy was really good with the brakes. On the way to where we were going, we had an elk encounter for about a half a second. <laughs> <laughs> it was probably an eight by eight. I wouldn't know. I just saw a flash of brown and it was gone. Yeah, he ran down, so he's probably on the other side. But this is where he's been raking his horns upon the top of there. on up to the top of the mountain so we could hear bugling but the wind started blowing so hard and it was so cold that we couldn't couldn't do much called in a couple smaller bulls I had a perfect shot on it well set up for my shot in the tree but he was not big enough to shoot so we just stared at each other for a while until he went away if it was the cold or that a, a little adrenaline rush of, oh, it was almost it. This was almost it. But um, our guide built us a fire and our little base camp. And again, the, the views and the, the fire and the warmth, and it was a great day. And on that first day, you know, there was, we knew the weather forecast was gonna be cold and possible snow coming in and rain. And so the wind started coming in, it started getting cold. And we didn't capture any of the rain, but we did start getting some snow flurries coming. And that, and that campfire was just unbelievable. It was, it was warm and it allowed us to stay out there a lot longer. 
Where in the World is Colorado Buck is brought to you by Norma Ammunition, precision ammunition for the serious hunter. Nikon Optics, trust, earn, Nikon. Carlson's Choke Tubes, the shooter's choice. Worldwide Trophy Adventures. The Mule Deer Foundation. Kenetrek Boots. Arms Corps USA and the Ammo and More Store in Stevensville, Montana. And the Colorado Buck Special Edition Rifle by the Montana Rifle Company. This segment brought to you by Norma Ammunition. Precision ammunition for the serious hunter. Overnight, when it's the snow starts coming and the high country gets snow and the leaves start changing, there's a lot of beautiful places in this world, but this here is it's one of them. Yeah, we're hoping to get a lot of snow up high because when it gets snow up high, this ranch loads up. They start heading down here. We've got a lot of winter range and the bottom of these big valleys and stuff hold a lot of elk in the winter. There's a lot of feed. They don't put no cattle on the ranch or anything, so. And what I remember on the second day was, you know, walking the 300, 400 yards to get on a rocky point overlooking a valley. Our guide just stops and says, he's over there. And on the other side, there's this beautiful big elk. Sit right on it and see that peak, right above that little dead tree. Okay. Looking right at us. All the way across on the other side, this bull is you know, over 400 yards to start with and it's just shining and standing out in the snow. I don't think you felt anything at that point other than the tunnel vision through the scope. Hey, again, you got it. First shot she took was 475 yards. Excellent shot placement. And he was kind of stunned, jumped a little bit, but then went up the hill a little bit more. Um, and so her second shot was 503 yards. Um, and again, she placed her second shot within three inches of the first one. Six by seven. He got a little seven point on him. But she probably I mean, I could take my fingers and stick them in both holes of the shots. At that distance, that's just insane. We have been to uh, long range shooting courses. We go before a major hunt and we'll go down for a quick refresher course. If I didn't have the training that I had before, knowing that I can shoot targets at a distance, I would not be comfortable taking that shot. This, and this is the furthest shot I have ever taken on an animal. Everything else I've shot within a much closer range. But when people come up here and they're, you know, that tuned in to the gun world that they understand that they can actually reach out there and touch something at that far, it makes it a whole different world on guiding them. I mean, you don't have to push so hard and sneak in so, and you can be a little bit more picky. And I mean, it makes it a lot different world whenever you got a, somebody that can actually be totally confident at 500 yards, just like it was no big deal for her. One of the things that I wanted to learn, and I did get a chance to, was to help skin my own animal. So our guide was really good about letting me get my knife and get in there and help and, you know, cut out a back strap, pull out a tenderloin.
And we figured that good old Southern hospitality that when you shoot an elk and you're going to have that back strap, you got to you got to share it with the rest of the members in the camp so they know what they're after. Dinner. And Connie did a fabulous job of just making it taste, not just the back strap, but every single meal we had was absolutely amazing. Follow all the action on Facebook at Where in the World is Colorado Buck? This segment brought to you by Nikon Optics. Trust. Earned. Nikon. We get a, a lot of different people out here, age class, size class, just small walks of life. But to see people that, that that's worked all their life and saved up their money and they, they come to places like this, a lot of them, they're not in their 20s, like me. <laughs> but it, it's nice to know that there's places like this, traditional elk hunting, untouched, unspoiled country that you can still get around in. This, this particular area that we're in, uh, when you get to the top part of the ranches that we're, that we're hunting on, you can see so much real estate. One of the things that I enjoy as much as anybody about this part of the country is these high mesas. And the farther that you go back toward the border, say Colorado border area, the valley floors actually get higher, meaning that, that the tops of the mountains become more walkable. Here it's more of a, it's something that you can enjoy more. If you're older, if you got some kind of physical problems, it's a lot easier country. I call it hunter friendly. That's what I, I like to tell people. I like to see those people that don't think they can come up here and elk hunt. It's about as elk friendly, elk hunting habitat friendly as you're gonna find. My first day of the hunt, uh, after Jeannie had gotten here, we had gone out to an area where we had uh, set the campfire on day one. And so we were glassing the area and saw three large, three separate but large herds of elk with some large bulls. Um, and we watched them migrating to the tree line. And so then we knew there was a good chance they're gonna come up our valley. And unfortunately, um, they didn't follow plan A. So we tried going with plan B and they didn't follow plan B either. So and unfortunately, we didn't get a single shot that day, but it was still a good experience in seeing those herds, of, the three separate herds of elk was, was pretty amazing. The next morning we head out, and we just barely get going and right on the side of the hills, his three bulls, he just barely had enough light to see. He looks for the biggest body and he took one of the best coals that we've got out of this place in a long time. We was glad to see that bull get taken out. He was glad to take it. Congratulations. I'm sitting there laying there going, which one, which one? I'm laying up there and he's going, okay, not that one, he's going this one. And I didn't know that my wife is standing choice? there back there giving $100 out to him and say, shoot that one, shoot that one. This is the same bull Tyler called in on you last year, remember? Remember you guys had a bull come in that had jacked up horns and a couple times? Uh, yes, up yes. on top. Yeah. Now I remember. Yeah, same bull, same horns. I remember that, yeah, we were sitting down and he fueled and it comes right behind us. Where in the World is Colorado Buck is brought to you by Norma Ammunition, precision ammunition for the serious hunter. Nikon Optics, trust, earned, Nikon. Carlson's Choke Tubes, the shooter's choice. Worldwide Trophy Adventures. The Mule Deer Foundation. Kenetrek Boots. Arm Store USA and the Ammo and More Store in Stevensville, Montana. 
and the Colorado Buck Special Edition Rifle by the Montana Rifle Company. This segment brought to you by the Montana Rifle Company, makers of the Colorado Buck Special Edition Rifle. Every hunt is different. It doesn't matter from, from one day to the next. You just can't say that it's always gonna be the same. Jack's hunt's a classic example of that. Four days in the hunt, he hasn't hasn't had an opportunity and, and he might not get one. You never know. Coming in, I think, the fourth night of his hunt, there on the side of the mountain, is, there's his bull. He's coming down. He's coming down. He's got to be out of He's got to be out of sight. He's behind that tall tree. He's going to the right right there. Through the opening. Come on, come on, come on. And uh, the first shot, I was off the sticks, and uh, it wasn't good. You didn't hit him. Where is he? Same place. No, didn't get. Shoot again. Straight up above it. Meow! 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 So I dropped to the ground on the third shot, and we heard this thump. We See? heard a big thump. Got him. Huh? You hit him. Okay, right there, right there. Right there, going back to the right. Over the hill. <laughs> Holy shit! God! Good job. Oh. <laughs> thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, God. Get off! Oh my God! Holy God! Oh my God! Good job, man. Oh my God! Oh! Good time to turn. Oh! Oh my God! Beautiful. Nice yeah. backdrop and everything, man. You got the mountains back there. Yeah. Great browns. Good thirds, good daggers. Just a good bull. <laughs> yeah, he's seven, eight hundred pounds all day. Yeah, he's probably pushing eight. I can't believe it. I still can't believe it. I'm believe, believe it. <laughs> awesome. Yes. Yes, yes. It's because you come out with the right attitude. I plug it. Whatever it takes, I'm going to do it. You come out with the right attitude, and that's I what did. it takes. I want to say, my, uh, last year, I was here with Colorado Buck, and we had eight guys there. And every one of us had an opportunity to shoot one. And my son got one. And this year, there were seven of us. And seven, eight, one, two, three, seven of us had opportunities so far that we know of, because we have two days left, uh, there's five, we know that there's uh, five bulls down. There's still two days left and hopefully uh, by the end of today, the other two will have theirs. This is a great place, fantastic place for elk.
thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, five years, five long years. Finally, finally. That's a wrap for this week. I hope you enjoyed the show. I hope you enjoyed being in camp with us. To all the hunters that joined us, the guides, cooks, all the people behind the scenes, which there's a lot, I appreciate you. All of our sponsors, our fans, the people that follow us on social media, it is much appreciated. For anyone that's interested in an old traditional style elk hunt, contact information right down here. Give us a call. Love to talk to you. Love to see you in elk camp next time. Please catch us next week somewhere in the world for brand new. And until then, God bless every one of you and good hunting. Close captioning provided by Rocky Top Outfitters. Book your hunt with Colorado today at heycoloradobuck.com. We'll see you on the hunt. <laughs> uh, what did he say? Our guide said, that's not a bad shot for a girl. Yeah, I can load more than just a washing machine. <laughs> but I do do a lot of laundry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that just made the end of the show.